bear time. It's bear time. Um, sorry for being so rando there. Uh, I needed to throw my some water in my hair, wash my hands. But I'm telling you, we are going for a ride soon, and it's already begun. So, <clears throat> welcome, welcome, and what we're going to talk about today, why my hair looks so short? What we're going to talk about today is why I have a bear behind me. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Coinbase. We're going to talk about Block, Square. And we're going to talk about the yield curve. The yield curve, folks. Uh, it's no joke. It's no joke. And people have this all wrong. They're chasing up stocks. They think that the stocks are going back to new all-time highs. They have this all wrong. And we're going to go over it. Uh, we're going to talk about briefly economic data. Not much out there. Uh, Schiller P ratio, how much that's changed. What has changed is gold, Fed policy, forward-looking guidance. We know we have a moron in that White House and in Treasury. Uh, that's not changed. Uh, Fed's balance sheet, we're going to go over that. That has changed. Uh, we have a lot to go over. So let's get to it. Let me share my screen first. Let's go over and say hello. Hello to people. Um, there's a reason why I have this bear behind me. My, uh, my normal background wasn't working. Wouldn't go blur for me. Sean, hello. Welcome, sir. Uh, you're back. Oh, we're going to have a do. <laughs> I love the attitude. Awesome. Uh, Pete, Mr. Pete. Uh, Tim, good evening to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yep, gold, baby. How long have we been on here talking about gold? Gold. Uh, RB, hi, Bob. Happy Thursday. Same to you, sir. Uh, hi, Bob. Looks like it's burning, all burning down. Yes, yes. And they they have it all wrong. They're bidding stocks up. They got it all wrong. People are going to get annihilated. They are going to get annihilated. China and Russia, yep, yep. And nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about the uh, uh, the Iran-Saudi deal. I mean, these two hate each other. And they're highly theological, yet you had an atheist communist country come in and barter an agreement. Uh, we are done. All our, all our talking heads are talking about is arresting Trump. We are we are so effed. We are so effed. Hello from Mad you're Mad uh, Jeff, you're in Madison Square Garden? Good for you. All right, so I guess we could say we're playing at Madison Square Garden today and not be lying. All right, so I'm taking that and running with it. All right, let's get to it. Uh, let me share my screen before I forget. Get my spectacles in place. All right. Let's get to it really quick. Uh, economic data. I don't even know what economic data was released this week. What's today's day? 23rd? Not much at all. Uh, existing home sales. That came in with a beat. That was a surprise. Uh, Thursday. Initial jobless claims. Came in less worse. Yet stocks still rallied. Tomorrow, durable goods. That's a big number. And we get the services, PMI, Purchasing Managers Index, and PMI for, <clears throat> for manufacturing. That comes out tomorrow. Those will be interesting. All right. So it's been a back and forth week, seesaw week. Lots of volatility. And uh, rearview mirror PEs, 28 spot two. We are very, very expensive. Not going to spend much time on there. So what really matters? What matters is that the Federal Reserve hiked a quarter basis point. Exactly what the markets have been expected. There was a brief period 
where they were expecting a half basis point rate hike, a little bit of convo about three quarter basis point hike. Then the banks began to blow up. Then all of a sudden there's going to be a rate cut. He's going to pause. It's as we expected, quarter basis point rate hike. And, and I'm not say, saying that I got it right. Most of the investing public got that one right. It was a no brainer. Uh, what the markets rallied on was his uh, removal of hawkish guidance. And then the markets, while Jay Powell said there would be no rate cuts in 2023, the bond market is not buying it. The bond market is saying, you're cutting rates. You are cutting rates. So I give my bets to the bond market because the Federal Reserve rarely disappoints the markets. They usually deliver on what the markets expect. So this is the environment that we find ourselves in. You never listen to what the Federal Reserve says. Watch what they do. Watch what they do. So if you've taken my advice on this in the past, you're probably doing quite well. Don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. So he's removing the hawkish guidance. He did a little jawboning that, you know what, labor force participation rate still not where we want it to be. Wage growth still a little bit too high. We want people to make less. Uh, that sounds great. Thanks for being one of the guys there, Jay. Uh, God forbid the banksters take a pay cut and give some to the little guy. I'm sounding like a communist right now. So this is what they've done to us. So the markets think that we're back. We're back to QE. It's, it's going to be rock and roll days all over again. What they're not factoring in is this. Inflation. The last time we had QE, we had less than 2% inflation. Now we have in excess of 6% inflation. Also, with the dollar dropping as it is, it was up today, but it dropped overall on the week, goods, imported goods are going to become more expensive. Therefore, what happens to prices? They go up on imports. What happens to imported raw materials? They go up. Oil, priced in U.S. dollars. So if the dollar declines, guess what happens to input costs? They go up. Watch the dollar. So the more he gets dovish or the more the bond market prices in a weaker Federal Reserve, the weaker the U.S. dollar gets, the worse inflation gets. That's all you need to know about. It's all you need to watch out for. So where to from here? Where to from here? I've been coming on here for whether I had the morning show or now the, the, the evening shows, Thursday and Friday night, or Sunday nights, I, I've been saying they're going to pivot at some point in time. And when they do, when they do, look out above for gold. It is going to take off. What had happened with gold? Gold soars above 2,000. I don't think we closed there today. Did we close there? Maybe we did. I didn't really watch it most of the day. No, we just fell just shy of it on gold. So gold is going up. Gold is saying, hey, uh-uh, uh-uh, we're not buying this. Inflation's still hot. You went on vacation, Jay Powell. You're not going to fight inflation. We know what you're doing. We know what you're all about. You're going to kill the dollar. Therefore, we're going up higher. Beware Comex gold. Beware the, that paper gold. Be very, very careful. You ever want that gold for delivery? You're never going to get it. They don't have the gold there. Be careful. Own the physical. Own the physical. So why else is gold soaring? This is the Fed's balance sheet, folks. It was up $300 billion last week, $297 billion to be exact. Uh, we are up yet again by another couple of hundred, well, about $100 billion. So we are back at levels not seen since October. So it took us from October of 2022, November, December, January, February, March, five months, five months to get down here, two weeks to give it all back. 
think about how much liquidity they need to pump into this economy to keep these banks from going under. Think about it. This round of QE is going to make the last round of QE look like silly season. We are going so much higher on the Fed's balance sheet, it's going to make people nauseous. So buckle up, folks. Buckle up. Oh, Bill Ackman. Now, Bill Ackman uses Twitter. Bill Ackman, if you're not familiar, he's a hedge fund manager. I uh, went had a big brawl with uh, Carl Icahn. Carl Icahn wiped the floor with him because of his short on Herbalife. He had like 50% of his fund, 55% of his fund short of Herbalife. And you don't you don't advertise a short like that. And Carl Icahn heard that, came in and squeezed him. And he squeezed him hard. So Bill Ackman likes to use Twitter to manipulate his positions. But this one here, uh, he may be just building his position right now. We are headed for another train wreck. Bill Ackman blames Janet Yellen for restarting the bank run. She's a basket case. She's 79 years old. Why is she not knitting? No offense to 79-year-olds out there that are very active. This grandma should have been retired a long, long time ago. She has no business being in Treasury. Biden has no business being in the White House. At some point in time, you need to put age limit, term limits on uh, these officials and get the, 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 the more younger folks in there that are more savvy. They have more to risk. They have children that are being brought up. They're more afraid of making a mistake. So uh, Ackman, usually I yell at him for uh, for manipulating Twitter to to uh, to advertise as short or to advertise as long. And right now, I think that right he's he's manipulating Twitter to get people short the market to help his short position. Bill Ackman, pretty much guaranteed, is short this market. Uh, Amid banking collapse, White House sees a strong economy, folks. There is no leadership. If you think that there are grown-ups in Washington, D.C., either on the Democrat or the Republican side, they are not. They are not. They are not there. They are not there for us. They are there for them. They call them the elites. We call them parasites. I want even Tucker Carlson, stop calling them the elites. They are parasites. They feed off the carcass of us. So without our carcass, they do not exist. So you need to start thinking for yourself, how must I trade this market? Because what the markets are doing right now, they're saying, Jay Powell's got our back. He doesn't have your back. Jay Powell wants his legacy. He's going to fight inflation. Is he going to prevent the collapse of the banks? Probably, if he's got the ability to. He's going to need Congress for that. Janet Yellen is going to need Congress for that. They really have no authority to go backstopping every single deposit out there. That's an act of Congress. You remember that Bernanke, Paulson, back in 2007, 2008, went to uh, Nancy Pelosi. Paulson got down on his hands and knees begging for a bailout. They haven't even gone that far yet. So... These banks are still in trouble. We'll go over the chart of the KRE. We're going to go over the chart. Of, that's the regional bank ETF. We're going to go over the XLF. It's no better. It's horrible price action. So the banks are still a problem. Unless, of course, you have the backstop of Congress. So where are we at? This is the yield curve, folks. Go back three weeks, a month, six months. I've been talking about this chart. The difference now is that for up until two weeks ago, uh, I was talking about the inversion of the yield curve, either happening, expecting it to happen. Uh, and I warned, I warned, and I continue to warn that you need not worry about the inversion of the yield curve. Beware of the steepening. Beware of the steepening. <laughs> Looking at the price action of 
the equity markets yesterday and today, it is quite clear that net net the retail investor and some I'll say hedge funds, probably not institutions, real serious, big institutional banks, they don't get it. Your mom and pop hedge fund, they don't get it. They're not watching this. Because note how we rallied initially yesterday and then we dropped like a rock. Yes, they blame Yellen for changing up her statement. Fine. But still, you had some really serious selling yesterday. Today, you had the triple Qs up over 2%. Then they dropped into about half percent. What does that tell you? What that tells you is that you have churning, churning. Big funds out there, they're watching this. They're watching this and saying, uh, hell is coming. To use Bill Ackman's term from back in 2020, hell is coming. We're going to take advantage of the liquidity that the market is giving us right now to get out. They have big, big blocks of stock, and they need a big pool of liquidity to dump it into without killing the market. So they send the market up 2%. They drop it yesterday to negative. They send it up again today, 2%. They drop it to up only a half percent. They bid it back up. Still didn't close at the highs of the day today. No new daily highs versus yesterday today. We're going to go over the weekly charts in a moment. I'm going to show you where we're at. And what have we been doing? Shorting. We shorted strength yesterday. We shorted more strength today. And we're probably going to continue to short this market because hell is coming. So how do you play this if you're not a, a trader? You're not familiar with how to short or to put uh, derivative trades on. We like to put sell premium right now. I have a ton of premium that we've sold that puts us short of Tesla, puts us short of Netflix. Uh, you know, if you can't do that, how else do you play the yield curve steepening? Well, I didn't know this existed until last night, and I started doing a little bit of research. And there are ETFs out there. Now, I do not get paid by these ETFs. I do not promote these ETFs, do your research, ch check it out with your financial advisor, that it's good for you, it's right for your portfolio. But if you want to play the yield curve steepening, I'll pop the link in the chat box in a moment, and we'll take a look at the uh, consistency, the, uh, the correlation of the holdings of at least one of these funds relative to prior yield curve inversions to see how we would have done. So the two funds I'm going to talk about, one, STGF. This is Merck Funds. This is run by Axel Merck. Him I know. He's a big gold bug. I'll pop this into the chat box. The other, I do not know. I do not know of this fund at all. Uh, I got turned on to Axel Marx's fund because I did the research on this fund. The symbol is I-V-O-L. I'll pop that in there. So let's go to Marx. I think I, I think I wanted to use Marx. Uh, yeah, I wanted to use Axel Marx. Holdings. There we go. Okay, so no great shock here. I and I like the I like the composition. Now take note of what they're holding. They're holding tips, treasury inflation protected securities. Awesome. Love it. We'll go over a chart of the tips in a moment. Stick around. Uh, the Vanek Gold shares, fine. OUNZ is the symbol. Uh, you could buy the GLD. I don't know if OEN, OU, OUNZ, I like the symbol, ounce. Uh, I don't know if that's backed by gold. Do your research there. I wouldn't, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if that's the reason why they're not using the GLD here. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, the Vanek Merck, Gold shares, uh, DBO, which is the Invesco Oil Fund, the VNQ, Vanguard Real Estate ETF, 
And note, U.S. dollar, goose egg, no U.S. dollars, fully invested. So how would these how would these positions have done or how did they do back in prior steepening of the yield curve? Let's take a look. So in gray, we have the S&P 500. In black, we have oil. In gold, we have gold. What do they do with the tips? I will never be a gentleman of CNBC because I am completely unprepared for my segment here. I did not add the tips to my portfolio of correlated assets. Pardon me one moment. I will return. I'll put on some easy listening music for you while I do my job, which should have been done before we went live. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do 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 purple do okay if I do it right behind price behind price pop there you go okay so one thing I already knew and I'm gonna change it for you in a moment why is this, why are the tips not showing oh I know why Now we're cooking with gas. All right, so they didn't have the tips back in 2000. Uh, the real estate fund in Brown, uh, they didn't have that in 2000, but they did have the IYR. This is the real estate fund. And you can see that goes back a little bit further back to 2000. So I'm going to replace their fund with IYR. Should be fairly similar. All we're looking to see is did they did they correlate with the inversion of the yield curve or the steepening of the yield curve? And did they trade in stark contrast to the S&P 500? All right, so 2000. 2000. Uh, we remember these funds weren't around. I can't pop these symbols in and do an overlay and make it simple. They weren't around, so we're doing it ad hoc right now. So if you're wondering why I'm not doing that, that's why. All right. So it, the steepening yield curve in candlestick in gray we have the S and P 500. In black we have oil. In brown we have real estate. In gold we have gold. In purple we have tips. So. How did the S&P 500 do during the last steepening back in 2000? Horrible, horrible. How did oil do? Uh, initially, pretty well, but ultimately succumbed to the pressure as we entered recession. So initially, it did okay, then buckled. However, real estate, real estate took off. Gold took off. We can't talk about tips because... Tips weren't around back then. Uh, fast forward, financial crisis. Now we have a trifecta. We have them all here. Right? We have uh, real estate, which initially did well, but then rolled over. But that was the financial crisis, right? So no great shock. Gold ripped. Tips ripped. Equities took a nosedive. So... Really good, great correlation back then. I think the real estate divergence was simply a pure banking issue and probably a one-off and not consistent with what we would see this time around. And it's certainly not what we saw back here. I mean, this fund, had you owned it, or one of these funds, had you owned them, back the last time we had a steepening of the yield curve, that was the COVID crash. So equities, again, in gray, tanked then rallied eventually but real estate during the steepening took off gold took off oil initially took off then remember it went bust oil went bust because they did the lockdown so it looks overall that all legs of this very very simple portfolio are not all going to fire off they're not all going to do well but you'll get several of them that will. So 
it's not about it's not about making money per se during this next crisis. It's about preserving your capital. These funds are for you. You'll probably make some money, but it's not necessarily about that. It's preservation of capital. Tips, fight the inflation that's 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 coming. Well, that's here. So those are two funds that appear to correlate pretty well with the steepening of the yield curve. So there you go. Let's say hello to people. I see the lovely Jody has joined us. Good evening, Jody. Uh, Bob, J. Biz. Bob, any chance you can take a look at SOXL? Yeah, I'll make a list. I know, um, I think it was Talon was asking about, was it Talon was asking about coin? No, it was RB. 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 SOXO. Uh, will WFC ever get back to 45 on bag holder? Is that Wells Fargo? Right? Um, we'll take a look. I, I, I just don't like that bank. <laughs> My singing, yeah. That's what they that's what they all say. Uh Bob, if you need a per- oh yeah, uh, believe me, I do, I do, I I have them from time to time, out of the Philippines, but um, not always reliable. Uh, Biden doesn't want us cooking with gas. Yeah, I know Congress is trying to put something through. Uh, Dish, hey Pete, Dish. Uh, Thoughts on the banks? I'm going to go over the banks. Yoga. Uh, Bob, do you agree Ross Clark on Ross Clark Clark on $60 oil is low? Um, no. No. Not right now. Uh, I'm pausing here for a reason. Uh, if you have the devaluation, or I shouldn't say that, the the uh, the replacement of the petrodollar with the petro yuan, and that deal may have already been signed, uh, you could see a uh, decline in oil prices because as oil as the dollar drops, you may not have that inverse relationship of the dollar versus um, oil. Not that it's really been. All that true in these past few years. Oil has just been playing out strong since that crash a couple of years ago. So um, if we go into recession, demand destruction, you know, yeah, but I don't, we're in recession, but I don't see that demand destruction there quite yet. And uh, they are going to need to refill the strategic petroleum reserve and that reserve. And that's going to take years. That's going to take years. So uh, $60 a barrel oil. We'll take a look at it. We'll see what the chart tells us and we'll go from there. All right. So let's take a look at the weekly charts, right? I, I, I came out gangbusters. I'm pretty bearish on the market. That's, that's talking a big game, right? Because, uh, the equities were up today and they, they initially the knee jerk reaction was strong. And then Yellen opened up a yap and uh, took everything down. But is that really her fault or is it just an excuse? I don't know. I'm not buying it yet. Uh, So let's begin with the 10-year yield. Now, the 10-year yield is going lower. It's going lower. Uh, We are still positive on the week. We're holding support. But when you take a look at a daily view of the 10-year yield, uh, very Weak price action on your momentum indicator, the stochastics, a double top, rolling over back down below 20 yet again. We broke support today. What does that mean? Where do you want to be putting money to work if you want to keep it safe? Treasuries, TLT, 20-year bond ETF. Yes, we're down on the week, but all down weeks are not made equal. We are well off the lows of the week. 
We have the rising 20 period moving average now. I think that we are moving up higher on bond prices, lower on yield. That could put a bid under equities. I won't lie to you about that. Tips. Now, this is something that uh, should be a concern to everybody out there. Why are tips rallying? Well, what are they built for? They're built to protect your portfolio from inflation. But the equity market is getting ready to rally because QE is back. They got it all wrong. What happens to their earnings when their input costs go up? Who is going to buy their goods when they can't buy groceries? They're not thinking straight. And if the Federal Reserve does, in fact, go back to QE, which it looks like on their balance sheet, they have their forward-looking guidance. Sounds like it. The bond market is pricing it in. Well, then, what's going to happen with the banks? They're blaming crypto, but these low yields are the reason why the banks are buckling. Besides, they're incompetent. And they couldn't ladder out their bond portfolios. They're incompetent. And their incompetence was driven by cheap money. We're going back to it. And we're. what's the very definition of insanity? Is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. We have been doing the same thing for over 15 years now. And they're going to do it again. And they're going to do it bigger. The reason why they're going to do it again and they're going to do it bigger, they don't have anything else to do. If they wanted to really fix the problem, if they wanted this to all go away in five years, Definitely not overnight. Powell would come out and say, yields are going up a basis point a month until I get it over the rate of inflation, crush inflation. Then we'll see what zombie banks are still out there or are going under. We will shore up the assets from those banks, onboard them onto healthy banks wash out the system of zombie corporations, get rid of them. Yes, unemployment will go up. That's a horrible, horrible thing. But this drip, drip, drip of economic suicide, economic suicide over the past 15 years, I can't believe it's been 15 years. Uh, you, you're, 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 you're robbing the future from our children. That is what they are doing, and they don't care they don't care they are corrupt so the bond market long story short here is telling you inflation is going up the dollar crushed this week hammered what do we read into this well we can't manage our books we were raising rates. Now we're looking at pausing on rates. Maybe we'll get one more rate hike this year at a quarter basis point. Maybe we won't. But the, the Forex market is clearly sending a message that, all right, I guess the United States is out of it. But where are they putting money to work? Euro. The euro is ripping up higher, up one spot seven. Yen. 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 The yen. They've had the lost century so far. Forget about the lost decade, a lost century so far. And their currency is up a percentage point relative to the U.S. dollar. Volatility. Now, volatility has been very, very good to us. We uh, Volatility came in a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we said, you know what? We're not going to sell any more premium here because we can't get paid. We only sell expensive options. So we decided, okay, uh, we're going to buy cheap options. And that worked. We made money there. Then volatility shot up. We sold the options on high volatility. And then we started selling options again. And we have them in our portfolio. Tesla, uh, NVIDIA. Actually, NVIDIA is not very expensive options, but... I like the, the I think we're going to probably fade on the video. So I sold the out of the money call options and I bought call options today, or put options today, put options today, because I think the video is going down. So the VIX is pumping more juice in. 
Uh, all down weeks are not made equal. Yes, we are down on the week, but we are well off the lows of the week. And on a daily time frame with an equity market that was up, so was volatility. Volatility was up. That's a five-minute chart, not a daily chart. Let's go to a daily chart. All right. You're right, Yoga Mac. I need a, an assistant. There we go. Daily chart. Uh, spinning top formation. This can go either direction, folks. Now we're, we're going to get down to brass tacks. When I talk, I, every night when I do market wrap with members, we always go over the charts I just went over and the Dow transports. Why? The transports are your canary in the coal mine for the economy, for equities. As go the transports, so go in general the rest of the market eventually. Not immediately. It's a forward-looking indicator. And the Dow transports are down on the week and we have one trading day left to go, but at current, we appear to have broken support on a weekly time frame. Daily chart. Daily chart, light volume so far on the, excuse me. <laughs> I drank too much coffee today. Still a weekly chart, volume on a weekly chart. Very light, now we go to a daily chart. Way too much coffee. So yeah, they tried to rally it today and no cigar it hit resistance folks it's like a, a brick wall up here and it looks as though volume did move up to about average today and it looks as though well stokes are pretty oversold uh looks as though they may try to take this down tomorrow's going to be interesting for the dow transports uh i don't think there's intraday charting here oh there is uh 30 minute chart not a bad close Good volume into the close. Dow Jones weekly chart up on the week, but a fade. So what's happening here is that we're rallying on the week, but too many people are focused on 15-minute charts, uh, hourly charts, one-minute charts, God forbid, uh, daily charts. It's not enough. It's not enough. You got to be looking at multi-time frames, and you need to be looking at weekly charts. That's why we do this show. How are we closing or appear to be closing on a weekly time frame? This is when we begin our analysis and we start thinking about next week, not on Monday morning. So right now, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, while up on the week, has a big topping tail. Maybe that'll change by tomorrow. Maybe we'll break out to new all-time highs tomorrow for all I know. I doubt it. The probab probability is that we're probably going to move lower here. Daily chart. Yeah, they just barely closed a positive today. You know, maybe this is a higher low. We don't know yet. Up volume is very light. S&P 500, a weekly chart, still up on the week. But again, folks, 400 on the spiders is like a brick wall. Volume is going to be pretty good. Assume they close it up on the week. Daily view. This is not a, a, a really inspiring chart here. You know, yeah, we were up uh, just about a quarter percentage point on the day. But look at the fade here. I mean, hell, we went negative. Um, not wonderful. How was volume? It was high, but there was a lot of selling. 30-minute chart. Not great. They tried to rally at 395 resistance. I think you need to fade any rally tomorrow. Trip Qs. Weekly chart. Obviously the strongest of the bunch, and we shorted it. Today, uh, we also are short of NVIDIA. Again, we're short of Tesla. Again, um, we have a very stiff resistance level, and this is not lost on me, okay? 
Uh, the risk that I'm taking on here is that I'm shorting a, an index that generally does well in a declining interest rate environment. That happened during the last QE period. But what if, what if inflation starts to spike up again? And anticipation of a Federal Reserve that may not be as accommodative as expected begins to kick in. These names become highly vulnerable. So we do have a breakout. Last week, we broke out above the upper band of resistance. This week is a continuation breakout, but we are stuck at this resistance level immediately above. What's the high of the week? High of the week, 315. Let's call it 315. Now, if we close above that mark, I'm probably going to have to lighten up on shorts. At least my... Uh, I bought the SQQQ, it's a leverage ETF, putting you short of uh, the Qs. So I would probably have to lighten up because that's a breakout. We're not going to lie to ourselves. You know, if I got it wrong, I got it wrong. I was too early. That's the same as being wrong. So we'd have to lighten up. But right now, I think that there's a good chance that this market fades tomorrow. Daily chart. We did manage to hold support. You know, maybe we're not going to fade tomorrow, to be honest with you. I want to talk my book, but I can't. I got to be honest. Because yesterday, we let's backtrack. We had broken out the day before yesterday. Yesterday, bearish reversal bar broke support. Today, we held it. So I can't, with a high degree of confidence, say we're definitely going lower tomorrow. Let's take a look at how we closed. 30 minutes sharp. I wouldn't be shocked to see us go lower. But uh, man, if we take out the lows of yesterday, look out below. You know, so this is where we pause a little bit. Right? It's obvious from the charts that we've gone over right now, with the exception of the Qs, and inclusive of the Qs, daily chart and intraday chart, all of these charts of equities are toppy. They're sending you signals. If you're on margin, think about lightening up. Think about getting off of leverage. Because once this gets going in the wrong direction, things are going to get real, real, real fast, folks. Today's lows could be tomorrow's highs. Think about it. The banks. Somebody asked about the banks earlier. I think that was Yoga Mac. Uh the banks on the week, believe it or not, are up. At least the large regional, um, multi, the large cap banks are. The XLF banks are up. We're going to go to the KRE in a moment. Now, on a weekly, a daily time frame, I do not like the banks here at all. I think they are breaking lower. I do not have a good vibe about the banks. They do not have the backstop of Congress. They have the uh, the bully pulpit of the Fed and of the Treasury. It worked initially. Uh, now I think people are rethinking, uh-oh, do I want to be long of equities going into the weekend and having a horrible headline come out on a Sunday night? I don't know. I don't want to. I'd rather be short. So when you take a look at, this is my favorite indicator, along with RSI. They compete from time to time depending upon the strategy. When you get a rounding top, meaning you bottomed, you rallied, you went oversold, you rallied, but your peak, your peak is under 20 and you roll over again. That is that is a nightmare scenario for whatever you're trading long. If you're long, you don't want to be long. So if this plays out, as I think it's going to, I think the banks are going to break support. The question is, will will questions be an, asked about why and does the rest of the market take a dip lower along with them? Now, taking a look at the regional banks, the KRE, They're down nearly another two percentage points on the week. They were higher. They're now lower yet again. We don't have new weekly lower lows. All right. So uh, rule number one for buying an index, a stock, a commodity, whatever, cupcakes. 
You want to see them stop going down in price. Well, we don't have a new weekly low or low. But the candlestick here would imply that in all probability, we're going lower unless we rally tomorrow. Volume, still, lots and lots of institutional distribution of the KRE. This is not mom and pop selling 100 shares of the KRE. This is Goldman Sachs. This is JP Morgan. These are all the big boys getting out. Daily view. Here, again, again, look at this. One, two, talk about your white elephants and your golden unicorns, man. Rarely do you get this. I think we're breaking lower on the banks. Momentum to the downside is strong, and there is no upside momentum. They are selling it. Technology. It broke out today, to be fair. Kills me to say that. Actually, I should say on the week it broke out. This is not a daily chart. Let's check out the daily price action. Yeah, a lot of fading here. How is volume? Volume is pretty good. Semis. Weekly breakout. The question is, do they hold it? Daily view. A little extended relative to the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. That is probably not going to last. I think what you're seeing is a lot of enthusiasm of the good old days of QE and what that meant, that you got to get back on the horse and ride it until it drops. Uh, people don't understand that this is a new dynamic. You know, there was a time when there was no QE, and we didn't rely upon QE. Uh, <laughs> and people don't know it. We're going back to that at some point in time. Biotechs, absolutely destroyed. We're going to be buying these soon, but at lower prices. I don't want to spend too much time there. Consumer staples, bearish key reversal bar on the week. Not much to talk about. Discretionary names. Uh, big topping action. 50-period weekly uh, moving average dropped down below the 200-period moving average. Not good. Emerging markets rallying with the weak U.S. dollar. We own them. We'll add more. Uh, energy broke support monthly, weekly, daily time frame. Oil. Oil is up on the week. Do we see 60? So, yeah, we could easily see 60 bucks. I forgot who asked that question. Uh, Tom, yeah, we could easily see 60 bucks. I need to, I'm visual. I need to take a look at the chart. In fact, I'm predicting that we will see 60 bucks easily. How do I get back to the queues? This is one of those awkward moments. <laughs> uh, here we go. Yeah, I, I, I think this is a dead cat bounce on oil. Uh, here, we'll, we'll memorialize it. And this is what I like to do. And I think that this is just simply a dead cap bounce, bear flag setup, call it cupcakes. It doesn't matter. Uh, I don't think it lasts. I think we're going lower. We are going into recession. How do I know? I believe we're already in recession. But according to Wikipedia and the Biden administration, we are not in recession. So therefore, who am I to argue with such geniuses? But anyway, uh, how else do we know that we are in not a recession? Uh, the 10-year yield is falling apart. This is not a sign of economic growth. It is a sign of economic weakness and no bueno. All right. So gasoline, what's this doing? Still holding in there. Not a horrible chart. 
Not a great chart. I wouldn't buy it, but not a horrible chart. Gold. All right, guys. Um, you know, you want to look at silver. You want to look at gold. Silver is technically outperforming gold right now. And, um, you know, it's not too late. It's not too late. Uh, but at some point in time, you're just going to wake up and you're going to see gold 50, 100 bucks higher. They're just going to reprice it. Uh, what's going to be the catalyst? I think that if they try to roll out that central bank digital dollar, which is supposed to come out in July, uh, that's going to that's going to that's going to send gold through the roof. Uh, and I would be buying the physical. I know it's really easy to click the button and buy the paper. I would buy the physical. You can't bribe the border guards with paper. You got to have the physical. So gold weekly chart, we're up uh, a little over one percent. Now, if you want to get the big picture view of what's happening here, monthly view, and sometimes the the charts just write themselves. Uh, I don't need to do anything here. Uh, last month was a horrible month, a horrible month. I was bearish on gold. I owned it. I wasn't going to sell it, but I was bearish. I wasn't ready to go buying more. Now, what a difference 23 days make. Uh, outside reversal bar, new higher highs. We're back above or we've hit 2,000. We're, we're these are these are new 52 week highs on volume no less look at the volume the month is not over yet let's take a look at a quarterly view of gold the charts write themselves cup handle breakout What what other what else do you need? You know, I mean, this is going up. This is going up a lot higher. So, if you if you're not currently long of the gold stocks, gold, silver, think about it. Think about it. Consult your investment advisor, please. And if you want to take a look at um, correlations or performance ratio. What's outperforming what? Gold versus the S&P 500 quarterly view, beating the S&P 500. Monthly view, beating the S&P 500 by a mile. Weekly view. Again, outperforming the S&P 500. Daily view annihilating the S&P 500, which closed up, but the gold price of gold moved up higher. So think about it. I'm not selling you gold. I'm not doing an advertisement. I just don't want, I want to see you people successful. You folks are here because you understand the matrix. You get it. So if you haven't acted, act. Formulate your game plan, act. It's not too late. Uh, what else do we have here? I think we're good. You know, we'll go over the GDXJ uh, gold mining stocks. We own them. We're in them. You can see we we're not at new fifty-two week highs yet. This we're still in an area where you could buy these stocks. They're still relatively cheap. And the thing to remember with the gold stocks is this: is that oil is coming in. You know, it's up on the week, but net net the trend over the past couple of months has been down. So what's the largest input cost for the gold mining stocks? Oil, energy. So you have energy going down in price. And you have gold going up in price. So the cost to produce the gold that they're selling at a higher price is going down. They're going to be printing money. So think about getting involved, GDXJ, uh, as a long term, these are the junior miners, GDX, those are the senior miners, uh, NUGT, very, very speculative. That's more of a trading vehicle. 
uh, leveraged ETF. So please be careful with that one. But those are the gold mining plays that we like. All right, let's do some trial requests. We'll sign off for the evening. Let's go to some comments here. Uh, Jody, I agree raising rates would keep us from higher inflation. Yeah, they, they might as well just bite the bullet. Bite the bullet. I, I don't know why they don't do it. it things are going to go to hell in a handbasket anyway. You might as well fix it rather than destroying it. I mean, if, if you got to crash the market, crash it with a fix don't crash it because you don't you don't get it yet you know you don't get it yet and everybody knows you're the emperor walking around with no clothes so it's 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 a very very sad state of affairs uh one thing that can stop me is gdxu and sqqq but oil not sure it depends upon the economic environment if it's an inflationary environment well you 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 may want oil, but I would think that you would want the global economy growing because then it becomes a demand issue, but not a United States demand issue. So I'm torn on it myself, to be honest with you. I'm torn on it myself. I don't know. I think the price of oil right now looks pretty weak. So I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. We don't have crystal balls here. All we can do is deal with is probabilities and what we know right now. Uh, Tim, just like the Roman Empire, decay came from within, from the politicians. Yeah, what did they put in their, their silver coins? Copper. Decline of the fall of the Roman Empire. Yes. Uh, hey, Bob, is SMG chart broken? SMG. I'm hoping it will retest October lows. SMG. We'll take a look at it. Bob, you're going to, <laughs> I just saw RL's comment. It's not a lion, man. That's a bear. That's a bear. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you, may, you? You caught my eye when, when I saw that. Um, oh, okay. Check the options price. All right. Check the IV. Okay, uh, my previous boss got a job in AMT. Not sure if good to add. My view, it's not exciting. What is your view? AMT. We'll take a look. Dave, UAL. Haven't gone over that one in a long time. Uh, Bob, Bitcoin. Did you BTFD? <laughs> uh it took me a second on that i'm a boomer uh so it, it takes me a second with those acronyms uh bitcoin let's check it out i know it was down a thousand yesterday wow rebounded no i did not btfd uh, i dollar cost average in each week so uh that's my game plan i just do that i'm doing well with it doing well with it that's what i'm gonna between the gold and the Bitcoin and my secret wallet, that's going to be using to bribe the border guards to get out of New York. Did anyone else see nickel on by? I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please, folks. If you could please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Jody with SKF and her. She loves the boil. What can I say? She loves boil. Who am I to pass judgment? Every week, boil. Okay, trend. All right, we're getting a lot of them now. I got to speed this up. All right, we're gonna trend uh, tech. All right, we're gonna shut it down there. All right, we got a couple more here. Um, Jack. How about SLV instead of gold? I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. The way you know that the, the um, historically, the way you know that 
the rally in gold is over is when ultimately silver surpasses gold. And usually when that happens and you get the rollover on silver and gold, that's the top. So they're they're both going to go up. Can you run ads on Twitch? I usually pay FIFA, but this one is nice too. <laughs> I don't think they like me on Twitch. I'm, I'm a conservative. I heard they, they're doing massive layoffs over there. <laughs> you are good, Jody. Um, the request line. Yeah, it is. You're not kidding, Yoga Mac. Uh, automated trend lines are working overtime tonight. They will be. Yes, and that's a great segue into, you're welcome, TZ, into our sponsors over at TrendSpider. Folks, if you're not using TrendSpider, you're not using AI. You got ChatGPT. You got AI.com or AI.io. You got to be using TrendSpider.com. 35% discount code below. I use it all the time. Look at all my drawings. I got to straighten this out. Get it ready for you guys. You can see I have my alerts in the video set up here. Uh, so let's straighten this out. We have a lot to go over. Let's get to it. All right, the first one up is going to be uh, SOXL. I got to clean this up. It's too busy. Better. All right, so this is the semiconductor bear ETF. I'm liking this quite a bit. What jumps out at me here is that we have broken out back in January, and we've been consolidating along the 21 period exponential, not simple, but exponential moving average. And we're bouncing off of it this week. But aren't the semis up? Oh, this is the bull ETF. Bull ETF. Sorry. Sorry. Bull ETF. Unfortunately, I like them and I'm short in the video. Oh, here we go. I had this wrong. They added this new sidebar here. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have a breakout. I still like it, though. Uh, if we fail to uh, close above this mark, I wouldn't short it, per se, but uh, I wouldn't be a buyer. But it looks as though they're breaking the SOXL out. It's looking pretty good. It's the bully TF. Uh, I don't like it for breaking out. I want it to go down, but it looks like this wants to go up higher. Yeah, you can see they broke down yesterday, broke back out today. Pretty good strength here on the SOXL. SMH is looking the same. They look good. They look good. Let's go to the intraday view. A little bit extended. Uh, we were in an uptrend channel. Uh, we have broken out above the upper band. Can that hold it? Can it proceed higher? Sure. But usually you want a nice orderly uptrend channel. So SMH, SOXL. SOXL is a leveraged ETF, not for the faint of heart. So a lot of volatility there. So be careful. If you don't want the volatility, go with the SMH. Same chart. Wells Fargo. Uh, this is a four-hour chart, not looking good. Looks like it wants to roll over. I do not like these banks. Weekly chart. Not looking good. Not looking good. Daily view. Monthly view. I mean, they're going lower. They don't. They want to go lower. Something's wrong here. Something's very, very wrong. And these are the money center banks. Too big to fail? Uh, something's going on. Something's going on. They're not catching bids. Fish Network, monthly view, putting in new monthly lower lows. Stokes are oversold. No reason to get involved here. Uh, well, you know what? You want to watch uh, this chart here, weekly chart dish. And again, uh, AI, 
automated technical analysis. I didn't draw these lines, folks. I couldn't do the program any other way. Click of a button. Take them off. Oh, look at that. I have possible support right now. But right now, we're below weekly support. Uh, I wouldn't buy this. I would watch this. I would watch to see whether or not we manage to rally back and close back above. Let's call it 950 per share by the end of business tomorrow. If we don't, we go lower. We're coming down here to 8, 810 per share. Then I would look to be a buyer down at that level, daily view. Uh, it wants to go lower. I would avoid this. You're catching a falling knife. SMG. Scott's Miracle Grow. I can't believe this is still a standalone company. I have my day lilies coming up now, a little bit early, but my day lilies are coming back. Very nice, very excited. I need to feed them some Scott's Miracle Grow. All right. So, um, weekly chart, SMG. Uh, uh, it's trading at current down below the 21 period exponential moving average. You don't want to see that. Watch for a rally back and a recapture of that by the end of business tomorrow. Uh, if we do not recapture, we're probably going down to the simple moving down to around 64.30 per share. Daily view. I think we're going lower. We closed at the lows of the day. I'm not seeing a lot of support immediately below. Let's throw over the automated trend lines on a monthly view. Anything down below? Yeah. Next price target, is, I don't think we're going down here. $20.78. Let's check out a weekly overlay on top of a daily chart. All right, so this is a little bit more interesting, uh, but still a long drop before we hit real serious support. But I'm seeing an area here of where we may have support. Here's your price target. Uh, $57.65. I'm sticking with it. That's where it's going. AMT. American Tower. I haven't thought about this one in a while. Oh, come on. My, my mouse gets so wonky when I'm live. This, this is going down. Uh, I would not be a buyer of this. Uh, we rallied up into the upper band of the downtrend line. I'll illustrate. There you go. And we're getting rejected. Uh, if we break support right here, uh, we're going a lot lower. I would not be a buyer here. This is not the bottom. I think we break and we move lower. Daily chart. Uh, they're trying to put in a higher low here. But again, if we break, we're going at a bare minimum down to 188.50. UAL. United Airlines. It's going lower. It wants to go lower. All signals imply lower lows here. You have your moving averages above the high of the week. You never want to see that if you're long. Daily view. Uh, we have broken a bear flag setup. We're going lower. I would avoid this quite possibly a short. A few of these that have gone over are potential shorts. Oil for the lovely Jody. Uh, we have, uh, we spoke about this um, earlier in the week on Sunday night. As a matter of fact, uh, I was not hot on it then. I'm even less hot on it now. If you're going to use Boyle as your trading vehicle, I would strongly encourage you do not use the price or chart of Boyle to identify your support levels. The reason is, is that you don't have enough data, one, two, you have time decay on boil. What you want to use is either UNG or uh, the forward slash NG, which is the futures contract, or you want to use um, the continuous contract. If you're using uh, stockcharts.com, just type in uh, not gas continuous contract. That'll bring you up to futures on uh, stockcharts.com. 
So I think that this is probably going to go lower. Uh, if, in fact, the media ever acknowledges that we're in recession, it's going to go lower. So uh, I wouldn't be a buyer here. I don't see a bottom just yet. Let's take a look at a daily chart. Maybe that'll sway me somewhat. It is not. I think we go lower here. When does that change? When does my opinion change? Talk to me on a close above $4.50. Then we'll talk again about possibly having a trade on right now. I would not even look at the chart. Here's what I would do. I would do this, create an alert, uh, breakthrough, no sensitivity. Let me know on a four-hour bar. There's only two of those per day. I don't want to know if we break above it on a five-minute time frame. I want to know if we close above that resistance level. Boil. Maybe. Maybe a long. I would ignore it until that fires off. Don't even look at the chart. Don't torture yourself. Trin. Trinity Capital. Where have we been? Monthly chart. We're in no man's land here. Uh, basically in a trading range. There's your trading range. We've been in here for a year now. There's no, I don't see a trade here. Uh, if we break out or break down below one of these two support levels, then you have a trade. If you want to trade the, uh, the, the trading range, that's fine as well. You're right smack dab in the middle of it. There's no shot here. You're welcome, Pete. Jay Biz, you're welcome. Uh, tech resources. A major breakdown here. Major, major breakdown. Broken. Holding the moving averages, but probably going lower. Uh, 29.50 is support. We're holding on to a weekly support level right now at 34.51. That'll probably break. Daily view. Uh, we broke out today, believe it or not, out of this downtrend channel. How do I know that? How do I know that there was support and resistance here? Click of a button, folks. Trend spider, 35% discount code below. Uh, holding support. Maybe we get a rally up to 37 bucks a share, 37.50. You know, I wouldn't bet on it. I, 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 I'm not loving it. There's other stocks out there to trade, to be honest with you. Last one up is Jack. Oh, we went over. Jack in the Box. How can you not like Jack in the Box? They used to have him here in New York when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, it's not a short. It's not a long. You're too close to resistance on a weekly time frame, which was at about 88 bucks a share. You have a couple of bucks to the upside, so you could trade that, but I would be bailing it, um, what did I say? 88 bucks a share. And it looks as though that's where it's going to go. It's probably going to go up there. So if you like that trade, go for it. Uh, I'm bullish on Jack in the Box. I always like them. Tim. Uh, Bob, great show. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tim. Thanks, everybody. Hey, thanks, folks. Thank you for being here. Like, subscribe, uh, and um, have an awesome night and have a profitable trading day.